Hello, everyone. Good afternoon or um, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Um, my name is Christine Jeregi Berry. I'm a yoga teacher and I specialize in yoga for scoliosis. For those of you that um, don't know me already, thank you so much for tuning in and for watching this on the replay. If you are here live, then please let us know that you can hear me okay. Um, let me know where you're from, where you're tuning in from today. And this really is, it's a weekly conversation that I'm doing. Sometimes it's, it's me talking about a specific topic about scoliosis, about yoga. Um, and sometimes I have interview guests. And today I have a, um, a very special guest. Her name is Elisabetta Dagata. I hope I'm saying this correctly. Um, so I'm going to bring her on now. Hi, Elisabetta. So she Hi, is a um, psychologist or somatic psychotherapist. I don't know, you probably have a few different titles. And it's just something we've, we've kind of touched on in, the, in some of the previous episodes, but we never had an, an actual um, expert in this field on the on the show so i'm really really excited to have you today so welcome elisabetta thank you thank you christine uh, for inviting me and i'm also excited to to share my experience and to talk with you and uh, we were the people that are listening to us yes brilliant so why don't we start um and i'm just gonna check a little bit to see if everything is working all right i think it seems to be working all right but guys if you're here just type in the chat box just say hello to us so we know yeah. that we're not just talking to ourselves which is good as well i love talking to elizabeth elizabeth as well <laughs> but obviously i don't want you to to miss out good so why don't we start so um you've got scoliosis yourself haven't you yes it's true when so, i was Right. Um, so why don't we start by, because I would imagine that you obviously specializing in this field probably has something to do with your own personal journey. So why don't we start with that? So what is, what is your story? What's your scoliosis story? Yeah, it's really true what you said. Um, my scoliosis story was a bit, uh, maybe different than, uh, uh, the actual patients with scoliosis because um, in the period when we when I was adolescent the most used brace was the Milwaukee brace it was a, a longer uh, brace that elongated spine mm -hmm. and so it was a bit um, difficult for uh, for me to, to wear the brace uh, to move to do activities and uh, I remember that my instinctive um, uh, answer was to, to stay at home. I don't want to go out <laughs> with right. the brace. I didn't like it. So at the beginning, it was a bit stressful until my teacher, one of my teacher of uh, Greek, she says, Elizabeth, you have to go to the class of theater because I know that the people with a brace uh, I can have some problems, <laughs> she says like this. So she pushed me to go to the theater class. I remember with the Milwaukee Brace, right. <laughs> okay. like acting and doing things and that I, I wouldn't like, but um, they pushed me, my family, my, my mother, you, know, you have to go. So uh, now I say thank you to my teacher because the theater saved my life really and uh, give me a lot of uh, opportunities to learn a skill that uh, otherwise I wouldn't uh, learn staying yeah. at home. What an amazing teacher. I mean, that's, that's not quite, that's not what I would have expected in a way. <laughs> that it's probably not what, you know, um, what, what comes to mind first that you say to, to a child who's in this, in this massive Milwaukee brace and who's probably quite <laughs> introverted i would imagine and you said you, you you prefer to stay home to say right you're gonna act on stage now and be in the in the school play so how yes. did that how how was that for you to i mean to begin with i would imagine that was really difficult yes it was difficult but um 
thanks to the theater uh, I enter in this artistic world and uh, really it was very important uh, to socialize, uh, to have friends uh, and um, when I finished with the brace treatment uh, I follow theater and dance for many many years and uh, so for this reason I say that the theater uh, helps me a lot because uh, I I practice and uh, I practice theater and dance and dance theater <laughs> for many years uh, mm. in in Italy and in Spain. Uh, it was a very big passion for me, and now I think that it was a passion also because uh, it gives me an aid, an important aid. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what uh, what what was your age when you had the brace? From I was uh, 13, 14. Okay. Years old. 13, yeah. 14. And I stay with the Milwaukee until 18 years old because uh, in this period um, it was different the, the theory of the research, the bone maturation, and all the, the knowledge that now we have. So it was a bit strange, uh, but it was okay. Now mm. um, I think that it was a, a difficult time of my life but also that I have learned a lot and uh, I turned uh, into a, an extroverted person thanks to making theater with the Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, good. So, so tell us a little bit about um, what, what you do now, what, what is your, I mean we know obviously you, you obviously studied psychology um, later on at, at university um, how did you get into this field and what is it exactly that you're doing right now? Yeah, now what I would I, I, I do and uh, my idea was to, to know more about uh, people with scoliosis in order to help them to live this period in the lighter and the funnier manner pos as possible. So keep away the drama, mm. <laughs> the dramatic situation, if it is possible. I understand that it is very, it is not easy. And also I, I focus the attention on the role of the adults as um, the professionals that uh, are uh, treating these uh, patients. As my teacher of, of the school, that she helps me a lot. I am totally convinced that uh, the adults, the physical therapists, the yoga teacher, the, the teachers, uh, every, every adult can have a very important role mm -hmm. to support, support these uh, adolescents in mm -hmm. their journey of scoliosis treatment. Yeah, absolutely. And what, what is kind of, um, because obviously this is quite a specialist field. <laughs> yes. I would imagine, I don't know how many there are of you in the world, but I can imagine there's probably not that many. Um, what have you seen? What are kind of the, what are the sort of themes that might come up with people that, that have scoliosis? Yeah, maybe I have to, to say that um, my interest is a bit, um, uh, varied uh, is different. My interests are different because I am focused on the professionals that treat the patients with scoliosis mm -hmm. and the patients. Yes. So I try to combine the, the the training, the educational training, with uh, the the therapy with adolescents and also with uh, the adult patients. Mm -hmm. So I has been working for uh, several years in an hospital in the unit of uh, spine with uh, sergeants and uh, physical uh, doctors mm -hmm. uh, of rehabilitation. So I've seen many, many, many patients of scoliosis. It was a big experience for me because uh, it was a, a unit in Barcelona, in, the, in this hospital in Barcelona, that uh, was is specialized only in uh, treating patients with scoliosis. So it was a big opportunity for me to see some aspects that are common, some aspects that are totally different in the patients, and uh, it was interesting for me to make bridges, you know, 
uh, between psychology and theater and art and mm -hmm. body work and uh, patients. Uh, so I, I remember I had uh, a group of patients in the hospital of adolescents treated uh, with brace or uh, making exercise and um, I introduced the body work with them. It was my first experience working with them. So I was studying theater and psychotherapy in that period and I put all the dynamics, all the, the game that we can do together, talking about the brace, but trying to, to, to search a different way to do because uh, it is a bit uh, heavy and a bit uh, uh, boring uh, um, otherwise uh, treating this film. Mm. So, so, so you've got, I mean, you were, you were saying, so you've got, um, on one hand, you've got children or um, teenagers, I guess, that are in a brace or in a treatment of brace. Um, yes. Were you also, or are you also working with people that went through surgery, through spinal surgery? Yeah, also, uh, yes, I, I worked with a surgeon, so I see a lot of also of fusionated patients. Um, and uh, I think that there are so different treatment, the brace and the surgery, and the, the circumstances are uh, really different, but mm. uh, yes. Different, sensitive, sensitive issue, I think, because they are uh, very young people, so they are full of fear when they go across a surgery, and um, I think that it is important to prepare them in order to give uh, safety to, that they can feel uh, in, in good hands, mm. because... Uh, They are like, uh, they are children, they are adolescents, they are not adults, so they are not uh, structured personalities and they need to be supported, supported. Yes. And most of the time the families are stressed also, so families can give this support that they need. Mm. Mm. Yes, I mean, and I always think about this, so I've got two children um, yes. who are still quite young and touch wood no scoliosis so far <laughs> um but i can only imagine what this you know what this means as a as a parent to to see your child kind of going through this through this um you know very difficult time obviously if it's the brace or if it's just different treatments or or even thinking about um surgery so i would imagine the the parents kind of need um yes. support as well isn't it Yeah, I think that the most important support is for the parents because if the parents are uh, calm, are uh, they feel safe, so they can push the adolescents, they can say, okay, it's okay, we are in the right way, you know, they transmit a sense of calm, but if they are stressed, their nervous system is agitated, <laughs> so in a way, all these emotions, all these uh, hormones of cortisol, etc., arrived to the, the daughter, to the, to the, the son, mm. and uh, it complicated the, the treatment. Yes. So can you give us a little bit of um, some advice maybe for, for those that maybe have children that are going through this at the moment or um, those that, that are working with Uh, with young people, with, with teenagers, um, yes. what can we do to help them? <laughs> yeah, it's a very big question that you are mentioning, uh, very interesting. I think the the most important thing is not focused on scoliosis. Right. Yes, they, are, they have scoliosis, but uh, it is not all uh, scoliosis has to know be the, the central uh, area of their life. There are uh, most of other vital areas that have to be cared in this period because they are adolescents, so they are, all of them are uh, changing their body. Um, there are different changes, the, the hormonal, the pubertal, the brain is changing. So if, if um, we make as a professional or as a parents the, the mistake that we uh, block and uh, we think that you no know, now we have to treat scoliosis 
And every day the person has to do something for scoliosis, going to the chiropractic or to the osteopathy or the physical therapy, to the yoga teacher. <laughs> every day, I, I've seen a patient that every day have some treatment. It is not good <laughs> mm. because scoliosis is a part, but there is a, a huge part of the life of the person that has to be lived uh, above all the social, the social um, experience because adolescents has to learn social skills they haven't. They have to create the social skills and this is a sensitive period to do this. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it's like uh, you can do it yes later but it's harder. Now is the moment. So it's the social skills, it is uh, the passion, uh, all the hobbies, the talents, uh, because they are uh, creating their identity now. Yes. So now you have to give a time to, to cultivate all these aspects of your life uh, in order to ask questions about uh, who are you. This is, uh, a crucial question for for uh, adolescents. It is mm. related to the identity. What kind of person do you want to be? Or um, which is uh, your favorite job? What 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 kind of study you want to do? Mm -hmm. So all all this aspect has to be followed and not yes. to be frozen because of scoliosis. Yeah, I love that. And it's kind of like, um, this is what I, I think is missing sometimes in in scoliosis treatments, as you say, it's almost like um, the, the therapists are just focusing on, on this. But, you know, obviously, as you and me, we, we know it goes beyond, you know, that scoliosis. Well, first of all, most likely it's going to be there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you are, as you say, we are so much more than, you know, an x-ray. Um, there's and, and in yoga, we talk about the, the different layers or the, the five koshas of, of being and, you know, um, or the, 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 the kind of the energetic, there's the energetic part. There's also the emotional um, side, obviously, which is, which is um, so, so important, isn't it? And um, also what works for one person might not be the same obviously that that works for another person which is um why i i mean i'm biased obviously i do love yoga because it it goes beyond the just physical I you know see. we we touch yeah. on we touch on the the mental side we touch on the emotional side um and the the self and as you said you know this whole kind of period of discovering who you are which never finishes i've discovered yeah. I'm turning 40 this year. I'm not sure if I know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> we are um, many, many, we have many uh, identities in, uh, in uh, oneself. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Let me just have a quick look at the, at the chat to see who's here. Yes. Good. So we've got Tatiana who's saying um, she would she's still she's at work she's always tuning in when she's at work, um, but she were she might try and listen afterwards. Diana is saying it, everything is working fine, good. Um, so Erfi Jan is saying my problem is um, right hunchback. That's it. Good. So I think you were here last time as well. So feel free to to send me an email as well if you know depending on what it is i might point you in in somebody's direction here um diana is saying christine what what is your yes tell us what is your curve <laughs> my and curve so she wants to know christine what is her curve or what are her curves what does she do for her pain um and does elizabeth have any suggestions for a right thoracic left lumbar curve psychotherapy wise there you go <laughs> uh, 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 wait Christine maybe I haven't understand the last part you say what is my curve so uh, what is I'll... your scoliosis so obviously you had your brace I would yes. imagine you still have some scoliosis yes <laughs> <It's true. laughs> just to guess just to guess <laughs> Yes, I know. I understand this question. What uh, I do for the pain, and the third question is the third one was, um, 
do you have any any tips or any suggestions for somebody who has got an S curve scoliosis? Okay, from a, well, from a psychological uh, point of view, left curvy, she says. So she's saying right thoracic left lumbar. So um, it's my curve. It's yours. Okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> yes. Seems to be so, the most common one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> totally agree. Um, what I do for for pay, for pain? Really, I haven't had the pain for. Uh, I haven't the pain. I didn't uh, have a pain when I was adolescent, mm -hmm. and um, I developed pain for um, a protrusion since uh, I had the protrusion in the uh, lumbar L4. Uh, L5, I, I think, or L5, L4, L3, L4, lumbar like 5, a, lumbar 4. Like a herniated disc? or? Yeah, it was not yeah. a herniated, it was a, a little protrusion. Yeah. And uh, so I started to do yoga right. <laughs> and the Pilates. And um, really, I, I did it uh, like uh, twice a week. But... Um, with a pandemic, with the COVID, I start doing it every day and uh, I really enjoy, uh, I really like move, movement, mm. the movement. I also am uh, um, studying uh, flamenco. Oh, wow. <laughs> flamenco dance. So I combine yoga with flamenco and uh, I try to, to move every day, moving all the time. And also, uh, I go to the beach because now I am in Sicily at the moment and we can uh, swim um, until the end of October. So <laughs> it is another uh, opportunity. Mm -hmm. But the idea of the movement combined with something that uh, makes me happy. I love flamenco, so mm -hmm. it is very good for me to do it. And I like yoga, but if you don't like to do uh, some uh, exercise, I think, is not good. You have That's to do no something point, that yes. you love. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Absolutely. This is what I find. Um, so, I mean, this is this is a one common theme. So whenever I talk to people and they might have different opinions on what to do for scoliosis and all of that. But what everyone agrees on is that movement is good. Right. So movement is important and it's really helpful for those with scoliosis. If you are a young person or if you are um, working with a young person and sometimes us as kind of working with those people and, um, you know, it might be the parents who are saying, right, you're going to be doing this, you're going to be doing schroth or you're going to be doing um, yoga or Pilates or whatever now. And um, yes, how can we kind of, <laughs> how can we help the young people i mean the the ultimate thing is that they enjoy it right yes. <laughs> because as you say you know there's it's not only about um i guess the effectiveness of the exact exercise but it's also that kind of um that connection i guess that you're, so you're creating so yes and yes. um well that they feel safe that they feel supported and that they do something that they want to do and 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 enjoy isn't it yeah it's totally true i totally agree with you because uh, it is um, otherwise it would, it would be reductive you have to do this exercise and you don't like to do it so it is uh, one effect <laughs> is destroyed by the fact that you don't like to do it so you will be um you will do with a stiffness maybe because you don't like to do it so what you say, um, I think that it is uh, uh, important that the person can flow with uh, the activity that they can do, but also that we as professionals can adapt to the person. So if we have adolescents, we, can, uh, we cannot propose the, the same exercise if we have adults, because adolescents need all the time novelty, novelty to change. They mm -hmm. They hate, get bored, yes. Exactly. <laughs> they hate the repetition, uh -huh. the routine, they hate it. So we have to surprise, to find a way to surprise them and also to, to know 
um, what are their passion. For example, there are adolescents that they like music. We can in, how can we introduce the music? How can we introduce dance? How, how can we introduce painting in the session of uh, yoga session or physical therapy? and um, uh, creating uh, the interest, making that they can be, uh, I don't know, I can say, motivated, um, surprised, they go to do something that is really interesting, uh, that uh, in a way uh, respond to something that uh, is in their curious mind, because mm -hmm. they have a curious mind curious mind. So if we activate their curiosity uh, toward their body, toward their mind, toward their health, it, uh, we, we have uh, some part of the game, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I, I can say, but uh, maybe we can do a good job mm. if we uh, tune into the adolescent yes. mind. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. So just coming back to Diana's question, I know I diverted you a little bit from yeah. it, um, but in terms of, I just want to talk a little bit more in terms of pain, um, uh -huh, yes. because I, I read this really um, interesting book the other day, which was, it's called Healing Back Pain, and it's very much about um, the link between emotions and pain. Um, yes. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I was thinking also to a, a book, I don't remember the name, of a, a surgeon. A, this surgeon of a spine, he decided to not operate anymore. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it was, a, it is an American uh, surgeon, I don't remember the name, but it was a revolutionary, uh, a revolutionary idea because he understand that most of the time people suffer pain, it was related to some emotions, something that is not uh, like a, a signal, a, sin, a sign, um, a symptom of something is not going, going uh, well, The people are not really enjoying with their life, um, so it is like a call, an alarm, and here there is something that is not good for you. Mm. Uh, so what you say, he suggests, for example, to use uh, the journaling every day. He says you have to journal. It is uh, the, the prescribed uh, therapy that he gives uh, to, to the patients yeah. to do the journaling every day. Every day, like when you uh, wake up in the morning, you have to write, uh, I don't remember if it is at least five pages of uh, fluent journaling, writing uh, all the ideas that, that came uh, to your uh, mind. And if you have no idea, you say, I have no ideas <laughs> <laughs> until something uh, arrives. And uh, it is a matter of self-knowledge because uh, you start writing uh, in the morning when you wake up. Maybe you have some uh, memories of your dream also mm -hmm. and some conversation, some idea. It is uh, like a kind of a meditation. Yeah. So one is the journaling. Meditation, meditation or something that is related to mindfulness, um, that is being in the, in the moment, mm -hmm. associated with the briefing, the, the importance of briefing. Um, so meditation and briefing for me are uh, one pack. Yeah. Uh, because when we have pain, we don't uh, breathe uh, sufficiently. Mm. We are like uh, rigid and... Uh, uh, maybe our uh, chest doesn't move, so try to put the attention on the, the movement of the body when we breathe without maybe changing anything, only just being aware of the, the breathing. It is incredible. The, yeah. the body changes alone without yeah. to do any efforts. We change. It is incredible the experience of yeah. breathing for me. It's very. Interesting. At the beginning, it can be, it can result boring because mm. you don't know what you have to do. So you start thinking, blah, blah. Um, but if you can have a teacher of, um, of this, or you can use some app in, uh, there are a lot of free apps or free videos on YouTube about this. I think uh, it could be useful for you. Definitely. Definitely. One of my, so I'm, uh, I do a, a four weeks um, yoga for scoliosis course and the first pose, I'm totally giving it away now, but the first pose is very much 
lying on the floor <laughs> and noticing yourself breathe and actually that is that is so powerful in itself and especially if you have if you start to get a little bit more um body awareness you start to notice um you know physically where 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 you can feel the breath and i find with imbalances you can really start to notice oh actually my whole breath is going into this one side and there's nothing going into the other side you know and um just just kind of noticing without even trying to change anything yes is 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 such a, a powerful and um and beautiful practice so there you go diana you've got some journaling to do now every day <laughs> five pages you said wasn't it <laughs> writing five yes. pages of journaling um meditation and breathing yes and doing something that you like and every day like yeah. an antidepressive Mm. Every day, like a pills, every day doing, uh, I don't know, doing to the beach or going to the beach, sorry. Or but not like smoking the... cigarettes. If you say you, you like smoking cigarettes, that doesn't count, does it? No, <laughs> <laughs> it is not good. <laughs> <laughs> good. So being in nature is good. Sleep, being yes, outside. Yes, it's good, exactly. And also maybe as uh, scoliosis uh, is created, uh, is developed uh, in the period of the adolescence, in my course I uh, try to um, rescue, rescue the adolescence that is inside of us. And uh, one of the main traits of the adolescence is the spirit of adventure the experimentation of uh, the, the novelty. Mm. When we are uh, older, adult, uh, we convert a bit boring, bored uh, <laughs> person with our routine, we have a schedule, uh, ag yes. agenda, um, day. But um, if we can introduce this, uh, we can introduce the adventure in our life. Um, we can rescue this adolescent that was uh, that is still present in, uh, in everybody. Mm. So I think it's because uh, most of the time we talk about the, the inner child, the inner child, the inner child, but the, also there is the inner adolescent that is inside. And uh, I like um, the the book of uh, this psychiatrist, American psychiatrist, is uh, Daniel Siegel. Okay. S I E G E L. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he talks about uh, the the essence of the adolescence, where in this essence, the word es essence is uh, um, an acronym of, uh, uh, I hope to say well, emotional sparkling essence, mm -hmm. um, social engagement, creative exploration. Right. So if we can connect with this um, trait, uh, we can connect with the adolescent that is inside us. Um, I think that we can give uh, us a big present mm. uh, because uh, in our life as adults, it's a bit difficult to make new friends. It is. Because, uh, <laughs> Yes, because uh, we are not a school <laughs> uh, yeah. making uh, friendship. Uh, so when uh, we have the opportunity to make new friends, for example, no, uh, to to stay in contact, and uh, it is really important. It's important to do the meditation, the mindfulness, to stay with uh, ourselves. But also, it is important to make uh, uh, social engagement. Mm. Um, very difficult yes. at the moment <laughs> <laughs> no but Christine you you are making the opportunity to do this for example because I, I didn't know you you sent me the invitation you are promoting uh, the connection with uh, the, the people that are listening to us so we have opportunities I think mm. also COVID <laughs> helps us yeah way. well it is it's uh it's brought a new dimension into the 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 way i guess we we interact and um i mean certainly with just with this work that i've been doing and with this um with my facebook group with the youtube channel i've connected with so many people that i would have not had the chance to connect with before so i'm definitely 
very grateful for that. Um, yeah. Good. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your, um, you've got a course coming up. Yeah. Uh, yes. In, uh, in October, uh, I tell you the 5th of October. 5th of October, the, yes. 5th of October, it's Monday. Uh, we do a course uh, directed to the physical therapist or chiropractic or osteopathy, yoga teacher, everybody who treats adolescents or people with scoliosis. Yeah. So everybody that is interested that can write me or can go to my website, Psychology for Scoliosis, my website. Yeah, Psychology and for Scoliosis. I have put it, I think, in the description, but I will double check. It's in there. Definitely link to the course. Um, okay, thank you. And uh, the course is mainly, um, we will talk about uh, different aspects that are uh, connected to scoliosis and um, normally we don't talk about this so we move from neuroscience to psycho neuroendocrino immunology uh, in a way that would be practical so it uh, is not a theoretical course but we will talk um, about the clinical case and also we do personal work because I think that the only way to to, to learn is uh, doing doing the experience. So we do by Zoom, and Zoom Zoom is incredible uh, tool for doing this course also because I have had the experience of the last course and the people connect. We make groups, so um, uh -huh. we can do it, uh, and it is a uh, funny also funny way to connect with people from different parts of the world. Yes. Yes, and your co-teacher, she is from Brazil, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Monica Bicaglio, she is organizing uh, the course uh -huh. uh, with people from Brazil. So um, we hope that there is also the participation of people from Brazil. There is uh, a person from uh, Switzerland. So um, different uh, people from different parts mm -hmm. uh, of the world, yes. And uh, mainly, I would like to to share my experience to give my my I don't know um, two two bags. Uh, I say um, yes, like the 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 baggage of of tools that I create uh, along my experience. Yes, yeah, and a toolbox. Yeah, toolbox. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> my memory. So um, we will uh, do exercise, we will do game, we will talk, uh, for example, if it is interesting, how to recognize signs of psychopathology, I, I mean really suffering of adolescents mm -hmm. and of uh, adults. Because sometimes you say, no, no, it's not important. Uh, but sometimes there are something that can, uh, you know, uh, put you in alert and say, okay, no, no, this is uh, important, this is serious. Mm -hmm. So maybe um, I have to know the way to speak with this person. Maybe she has to go to a psychologist. Uh, yes. When something is heavy, it is not uh, mm. common. Yes, and, and we, uh, certainly as yoga teachers, um, we touch on so many different fields. Oh, you yes. know, with, with obviously the, the way we work. And it's so important to know when it's over your head, you need to refer to, to someone else, obviously. So um, mm. I think I think that's that's really important. So it's great. You say it's great for anyone who's working with people that have um, scoliosis, young people, old people. Yes. Uh, yes, it's mainly addressed to... Adolescent. To adolescents, yeah. but also to adults, to the parents of uh, the adolescents. Yeah. We will talk about the nervous system. <laughs> so nervous system is for everybody, also for us. Yes. And <laughs> and also um, we talk about emotions and about some limiting beliefs that uh, are very common in scoliosis. Mm. So how can we uh, recognize that the belief is there? And we can um, do something as professionals. And also about the health, because sometimes I, when I I treat with adults, uh, with adult patients of scoliosis, uh, I I feel that something is like static. I have health, I have no health. You know, like uh, 
Elf is a scars. So um, I have scoliosis, so I have no health. Uh, something like this that we can um, really we can change or we can recognize that there is this uh, pattern of thinking that doesn't help the person because yes. elf is not static. Elf is uh, an ability, is something that we uh -huh. can improve, we can train. It is infinite, it is ab abundant. And more we train it in the psychological, in the physical, in the social aspect, more healthier we are. Mm. Yes, and I, I'm, um, I'm just kind of thinking about this because we get from doctors, once you get a diagnosis, yeah. You know, it takes you into into this place where you think there is something wrong with you. Basically, you've just yeah. been told that there is something wrong with you. Um, and then it's almost like trying to get out of this again. <laughs> it's trying to under diagnose yeah. yourself in a way. <laughs> yeah, you have to make it work <laughs> to, to keep away all the charge that the diagnosis uh, uh, bring with you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. You. Absolutely. Yeah. And Good. also the prog prognosis, prognosis? Pro yes, absolutely. I'm, yeah, I'm glad you say that. So, you know, they're saying, um, well, it's, I'm sorry, but it's uh, going to get down, it's going to go downhill from here. So in uh, 10 years, you'll be here. And in 20 years, you will be sitting in a wheelchair. You know, I've, <laughs> I've had people say that, you know, to, um, to, to patients. I'm not saying that yeah. this is for everyone, by the way, but, um, you know, sometimes doctors can make those predictions based yes. on you know uh, i don't know statistics or based on previous cases that i that they have seen yeah. um and sometimes it um uh, arise to the person so they have to realize the prediction because yeah. it's something that they enter in the in the in the brain and the brain sends the message to the body that this is the the future so yeah. they organize. It is like a sort of a organizing a belief. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yes. We will talk about uh, the no nocebo effect. Placebo and nocebo. Placebo. Effect. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Amazing. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm very excited about it. I will be joining. I'll be joining the course already. I said already. Um, I'm going to be there. I think it's um, uh, really, really interesting and so important. And thank you so much for all the the work that you are doing, obviously supporting people with scoliosis. Um, so apart from this course that is obviously mainly for health professionals, um, you're also working with patients directly for somebody who might think they need a little bit of, of help yeah. in that area. Yes. Yes, um, I would like to work uh, with uh, the adolescents, but normally adolescents don't go to the psychologist. They go to the, the physical therapist mm -hmm. uh, to, to do exercise. So the patients arrive adult. Usually adults. Yeah. Yes, to the psychologist. Sometimes it's later. Sometimes uh, it is... Uh, you know, all the um, the drama is just uh, entered in their mind, and uh, it is a bit difficult to to move from their mm -hmm. depressive state. So for this reason, I think it's uh, it's uh, good to do a, a prevention with the adolescents because it is really easy when you are young to do a work that yeah. can be like uh, somatized, <laughs> incorpor yes. incorporated. And uh, it is easier. As an adult, you can do also the work and uh, it just it is takes a bit longer. longer. Yes, yes exactly. Because uh, exactly. we've been walking with this stuff around in our shoulders, in our backs for the last yeah, 40, exactly. 50, 60 years. So it takes a, a little bit longer, doesn't it, to dismantle? Yeah, it, yes, it's the same as the, the body. Walking the body. The body. The, oh, the, the body. body. <laughs> the body, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My English accent, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have an accent as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. Good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Stay on a little bit. And um, I'm just going to say goodbye to everyone. Um, so thank you so much for, for those of you who have been watching live. I know I'm, I'm sure you've, you've found this really, really interesting. 
Um, and next week, I will be talking to Anna Klein, and she is going to be talking about pregnancy and scoliosis. Always oh. an interesting um, topic as well. And yeah. then the week after, I'm going to be talking about uh, lumbar scoliosis. So there's been lots of people asking about uneven hips and different, you know, imbalances in the psoas muscles and stuff. So we can address that then. But thank you so much, um, Elisabetta, and um, really, really lovely to have you here today. Thank you to you, Christine. It was very, very good for me also to speak with you and it, your questions are good for me also to think and uh, to rethink uh, how I can improve treatment and uh, so it was very good and thank you for the questions of uh, Diane uh, from our public. So it yeah. was nice to be this technological meeting. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'm just ending.